noises continued. One night Rosa woke up and she saw a dark figure like a shadow moving through the living room. Scared, she tried to turn on the lights, but nothing happened. The next morning she found wet footprints exactly where she had seen this figure walking. A few days later, the situation worsened when they began hearing a dog barking in the house, but they didn't have a dog. Over time, Latoya's children's violent behavior became more frequent and more intense. The children began to physically attack each other, often without provocation, and even suffered episodes of seizures and sudden mood swings. Stomach pains, inexplicable bleeding, and even symptoms re revealing, resembling severe illnesses began to affect everyone in the house, except for Rosa. The situation escalated to a critical point in the early hours of March 10th, 2012, when Latoya and her 12-year-old daughter were in Rosa's room with a friend. Suddenly, the girl fainted and began to float unconscious above the bed. Latoya and Rosa, desperate, gathered around the bed and started to pray. Suddenly, the daughter descended toward the bed and woke up without any memory of what had happened to her. When they told their family members about the incident, everyone left the house in fear and refused to return. So at this point, they're terrified. They don't know what to do. So Latoya and Rosa seek help. They inquire at local churches. They report the aforementioned events, but uh, most churches did not take their allegations seriously. One church suggested that there could be evil spirits in the house. 
she came to the house on Carolina Street on April 19th, 2012. And she witnessed, like, the inexplicable. One of LaToya's children walked on the walls and flipped over his grandmother without ever letting go of her hand. So with the intervention of the authorities, the family was temporarily, sadly, separated. Valerie recommended that the children be removed from the house and placed under temporary care. Latoya, as you can imagine, was devastated by the separation from her children. And although she felt bad that she had lost this battle, she still hoped to reunite her family again. A man named Reverend Michael Maginot was called in to perform an exorcism. He interviewed Rosa and Latoya for four hours, during which the lights flickered and the curtains moved on their own. Based on the evidence that they provided him, the Reverend performed three exorcism rituals, two in English and one in Latin. Um, not to break up the story here, but I didn't know that we still did exorcisms, even in 2012. That doesn't feel like it's that long ago. And also, I didn't know that anyone really spoke Latin anymore. Um, just, you know, prove me wrong in the comments, but that's crazy to me. Anyway, during the sessions, LaToya convulsed and screamed in pain, stating that the demons were resisting leaving her body. After the Reverend completed the final ritual, the house fell silent. LaToya and her mother moved to Indianapolis, and in November of 2012, after months of separation, the children returned home. There were no more reports of possessions. So, with the growing fame of the house on Carolina Street, paranormal investigator Zach Baggins purchased the property and demolished it in 2016. He collected parts of the basement to display in his Museum of Paranormal Phenomena in Las Vegas. My niece was just there, I'll have to ask her. Latoya and her family never returned to the house on Carolina Street. The story became known as one of the best documented possession cases in American history, and in fact served as the inspiration for the movie called The Deliverance. Today, the family lives in peace, far from the horrors that they experienced, but they still carry scars of what happened in the house on Carolina Street. So, let's talk about this just a hair. Um, I know that probably majority of people watching this video do not believe in demons or possession or exorcisms. Maybe you believe in exorcisms, but... And that's totally okay. I myself am not 100% sure that I believe in such things either. Um, I really am, which is kind of silly, but... Because I believe in ghosts. Um, I'm a see-it-to-believe-it kind of girl most of the time. However, I do have a story that I will share with you about a similar incident that I have been told about. Now, first of all, 
sounded different. Now this event didn't last very long and it was a couple of weeks before it happened again. But then Lakeisha started losing time. She started having conversations with people that she didn't remember. She started doing things and taking pictures of things and all of these things that she just either wouldn't normally do and could not remember doing. And she recalled speaking to this man and he told her that he was possessed by a demon. And if I remember correctly, he had another demon that was in the process of possessing Lakeisha. She was terrified, of course, and she was like, okay, no, like, you believe you're possessed, I'm, I'm out, we're done. Which was really, really smart of her. So she ended up coming back home to St. Louis. Now, I know there was more stuff that happened, but it's been so long, I can't remember. And I really wish that um, I could ask my friend to tell me the story again, but I doubt she even remembers. But I remember because it was so, like, surprising to me to hear a first-hand account of someone. So, Lakeisha goes home, and she literally spent weeks upon weeks in bed. And again, the same thing. She couldn't remember things. Her parents would talk to her. She just wouldn't eat. She wasn't doing anything. She had dropped out of school at this point, and she was basically, like, failing to thrive. And then it turned into her parents started describing that she spoke in a different voice. She spoke in a different language. Her eyes did that really hazed over, creepy thing. And then Lakeisha would come back. And then it would go back to whatever, whoever, whatever. Eventually, Lakeisha came clean to her parents and said, you know, I dated this guy. Da -da -da -da. He believes that he was possessed, etc., etc. Her parents actually found someone in the St. Louis area. Again, I, I don't, I mean, do you go to the yellow pages? I don't know what you do for such things. Her parents had an exorcist, exorcism performed upon her because it got to the point where Lakeisha was trying to escape the house saying that she had to get back to the boyfriend because he wanted to take her with him to hell. Now, I know if you're still listening, you're like, Shannon, what the heck are you talking about? Hold on, hold on. So, Lakeisha's parents 
obviously more than I can't remember, but I remember thinking, oh my lord, there really are things out there that we cannot explain. Now, do I know that it was a demon? No. Have I met Lakeisha? Yes, of course. Before this, do I think she's loco in her cabeza? No. Do I think something happened to her? Yes. Yes, I do. Was it a possession by a demon? I have no clue. Do I believe it could happen? I have no clue. Um, I would love to know your thoughts on things like this. Um, you know, do you believe it? Have you experienced it? Do you know someone who has gone through something like I described with Lakeisha? Again, and you may find it quite strange that I believe in things like ghosts and things like that, and that I don't necessarily believe in demons. Um, because, you know, usually with one you have another. Sean believes. Um, but, um, I don't know. I guess maybe it is that little Jehovah's Witness girl. Um, I can hear my mom, like, beating all of these things into my head about Satan and hell and the demons and all. And so maybe my brain is just like, nah, you don't believe none of that. None of it. So that could be why I'm so resistant subconsciously. I just am like, nope. Nope. But anyway, I thought that this story was interesting and kind of spooky. But it wasn't really in the realm of a true crime case. So I wanted to post it for you guys for extra content. I hope that you enjoyed.